Come on, Odie. Yeet. 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 No. No yeet. No yeet. He'll never give up. He'll stay till the fight's won. Bob Hansen is there. Bob Hansen, your wacky next door neighbor. Bob Hansen is there. Bob Hansen. Yowza. Rock and roll, daddy. What's going on, Bob Squad? It's me, Bob. I'm driving in my motor vehicle. You can take the man out of the 2011 Toyota Venza, but you cannot take the 2011 Toyota Venza out of the man, daddy. It's like the Joe Biden of cars. Hey, you know what you were getting and actually pulls to the right more than you think. Hey, it's a little political joke. Yeah, my face is cut off. It doesn't matter. You can see the Bob Squad Illusion shirt. This is a one-of-a-kind shirt. This is the only one in existence uh, because the... Uh, some merchandise company associated with Guns N' Roses saw it and pulled it down within a half an hour of being up from T Public. So I was able to get this and three stickers and nothing else. So this is the Illusions Bob Squad shirt. So there you go. I already recorded the wrestling thing. I'm on my way to the movie theater. Uh, I'm going to see Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I saw Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I saw War for the Planet of the Apes. That was the third one. The middle one was Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. These main actors have included uh, James Franco and James Lithgow and Gary Oldman and uh, Woody Harrelson and the voice of Caesar has been um, uh, Andy de Circa Soleil and they've been a very entertaining films directed by Matt Reeves who directed The, the Batman in 2022 that's when that film came out arguably the greatest film ever made. So I'm a big Planet of the Apes guy. My favorite movie is uh, 1968 Planet of the Apes. So how about that? So here I am. I'm almost nervous. I'm anxious. What am I afraid of? What are you afraid of, Dr. Zayas? They were here first and they were better than you. Beware the beast that is man, for he will make a wasteland of his home and yours. Time bends. Spaces boundless. It squashes a man's ego. I feel lonely. If Dr. Hestline's theory of time travel is correct, then the men who sent me on this journey are long dead by now. Just one more thing before I go. Nothing scientific, purely personal. Does man, that magnificent beast, he who marvels at the stars, still make war against his brother? Keep his neighbor's children starving? I'm at a green light, but you can't really go because it's still kind of flooded. So I'm at a situation here. The people behind me are upset, but there are motor vehicles in front of me, and um, there's nothing I can say. It's a total eclipse of the heart. Once upon a time, I was falling in love, but now I'm only falling apart. There's nothing I can do. It's a total eclipse of the heart. Oh, I'm going to go. That might have been a mistake. Hey, we're in. All right, this is how it ends sign over there says end road work which is silly some people will complain about anything and that is a yellow squig a sign with a black car and squiggly lines behind it that means snakes are following your car a lot of people do not know that so i'm excited to go to the amc movie theater at 1640 south camino rio road something or other and i'm gonna see uh several previews for upcoming films probably a deadpool with um the wolverine guy squeezing a lemon stopping on a dime don't know where we're going but we are making good time baby that's how we rock and roll in the bob squad daddy i got the mode of a toad the habit of a rabbit we'll grapple in the chapel wrestle in a castle put a tingle in your groin from denver to des moines we never stop rocking daddy in a squad it's your t-shirt tpublic.com <laughs> Okie dokie, we're going south on the 805, it's a popular San Diego freeway, San Diego, America's finest city. So I'm excited after the previews, um, Nicole Kidman uh, usually says something in a British accent. Is she British? I don't know, but she is for this. And she tells us about imagination and dreams and being taken away to a faraway land and lost within ourselves, but also drink high fructose corn syrup and aspartame at the same time. Drink choke, drink Coca-Cola and let your imagination run wild, daddy. So I'm excited for that. Now I'm excited for this Planet of the Apes film there, baby. Um, 
you know, in War for the Planet of the Apes, the third one that came out probably 2018-ish, something like that, with Woody Harrelson, 2019 maybe, um, I thought that would be the third and final one where we, you have to complete the story. We have to get to the Statue of Liberty. How did the apes take down the Statue of Liberty? Did it just, did it just come down with a big bomb or something? I think in the second one with Charlton Heston, he was barely in it. You blink, you miss him, and that guy looks like him. I think it was Beneath the Planet of the Apes, Gojitron. Beneath the Planet of the Apes, I think I'm right, right? That's where, that's where the entire Earth blows up at the end, so there'd be no more sequels, except there totally was. Um, how did that happen? Hold on, I'm switching lanes over here, Daddy. Anyway, they alluded to, like, nuclear bombs and this, that, and the other thing, but I think they're rewriting that a little bit, because now we've had the virus. Starting with James... Whoa, that guy's going way too fast, Daddy. Um, he is burning rubber there. He's got to take a serious dump, I bet. Maybe that's why people buy those muscle cars and speed them down 120 miles down the freeway. I need a muscle car. Why? Crohn's. I don't know. I think I got Crohn's now. Doesn't seem to be a toilet bowl or... Okay, stop. Stop it. Who do you think you are? Knock it off. Come on, Eileen. You've got COVID-19. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Silly song. You gotta entertain yourself on the road, Daddy. I'm a cowboy and I'm a steel horse I ride. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I got my ticket from Fandango. So I'm excited about that. Um, I got, uh, I'll be there in like three minutes. So I got about four minutes until the... I figured out that this theater, when they, the start time is... There's 20 minutes after the start time on your ticket to the movie pretty much is starting to start, if that makes any sense. So uh, I'll get there, and then my, my, I'm probably going to miss the movie trivia of Maria Menounos, so that is unfortunate. But I'll urinate and my penis like a real man. That's how men do it. I don't care if everyone's a woke AF daddy. A good old-fashioned red-blooded American dick pisser. That's how Bob does it, daddy. Never stop rocking. So I'll urinate and my penis. Hopefully I'll get to the um, the concession stand. Uh, and and uh, I won't be. It's Wednesday, so I shouldn't be on line behind too many stupid people and their dumb dates holding each other's fat sweaty hands talking about how much popcorn they want like they've never heard of popcorn or soda the, the menu befuddles the, these these slow folks and i can get my pretzel nuggets with the cheese there daddy and i uh, dip them in there and we have a great old time we have a great time loaded up on carbs for the apes baby i like to do that and i got uh, i always sit, sit in uh B1, B2, or C1, or C2 in one of those seats, like in the front and off to the right. I don't know why I got a problem, but I have to sit there. I must sit in those seats. And there shouldn't be too many people in this uh, thing. This, this movie's been out for like a week, and it's a Wednesday, so we should be okay there. How about that? I'm going to make a left light, provided it is green, which it is. Safety first, everybody. I'm a very, very serious... Those people are coming in really half hot, heavy for their... All righty there. You don't want to get in a vehicular collision. Okay, that's no good for the 2011 Toyota Venza. Dual airbags, baby. That's how we rock and roll in the squad. <laughs> I cracked myself. I tried to keep a straight face and I failed. All righty. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna park in this uh, this bad boy, this mamma gamma, mamma jamma, this Vince Gambini. I can't talk today, guys. I'm excited. I'm gonna see monkeys fight. I mean, come on, come on. What are we doing? It's it's got such, we gotta take a lot of, it's two and a half hours long, it doesn't need to be. That's the only uh, thing that's not exactly tickling my taint about this film. It could be an hour 45, right? What, what are we doing? Are, you, you, are we changing my life, Cornelius? We're not. What are you afraid of, Dr. Zayas? Move your ass. These people are so stupid. God, I can't believe we're part of the same. No wonder the monkeys took over. Dr. Zayas knows how to park Okay. <sighs> I'm going to park in Section X. Section X, you maniacs. You blew it up. God damn you. God damn you all to hell. <laughs> Rock and roll, daddy. What's going on, Bob Squad? We feeding the fever, starving the cold, hogging the covers, staying in the sheets. We're twiddling our thumbs and 
flapping our gums. Rubbing elbows, greasing palms, movers, shakers, trendsetters, go getters, gypsies, tramps, and thieves, saving trees, hugging wells, kissing hands, and shaking babies. One more time, wacky next door neighbor. What are we talking about, Daddy? We are talking about Monday Night Raw from May 13th, 2024. The Hulu edition. Hulu edition, not limited enough commercial interruptions. 90 minute action pack day. Drew McIntyre is still Scottish. And he comes out and he talks and he talks about CM Punk and the hottest feud in WWE is between two guys who can't wrestle each other right now, which, uh, which is, says something, it says something, because you talk him in the seats, daddy, and Drew McIntyre makes a great joke about CM Punk looking like he's on drugs despite never having done any. And isn't that nice? And he tells them that CM Punk does not make the big towns such as Greenville, South Carolina. And I'll be in Greensville, say. <laughs> I'll be in Greenville, South Carolina, opening for my buddy Zoltan, Friday, June 21st, Saturday the 22nd, Sunday the 23rd. I think ZoltanComedy.com, you can get those tickets. Maybe I'll remember and put a link in the thing. I probably won't, but whatever. Be that as it may, Greenville, South Carolina. <laughs> you just saw Raw... And now you can see Bob and get even more raw. Oh, hi, buddy. Odie's off to the side there. You can probably see his butt. There you go. No cold butts. No cold butts in our house. Okie dokie. Anyway, Damien Priest interrupts Drew McIntyre. He goes, hey, you complain too much. You need to look in the mirror and blame that guy, which would be yourself. Okay. Um, this was the best live Damien Priest promo or segment, I guess, not technically really not a promo, there's no specific match they're promoting, um, but the best Damien Priest talking segment live ever. I really like this, um, I, I felt like he was talking like himself, I believed him, I believed Damien Priest, and he was talking more or less like an adult man to Drew McIntyre, there's going to be some WWE speak in there, of course there is, I gotta sneeze, god damn it. Daddy. That's how we rock and roll in the squad, Daddy. I gotta vacuum again. Maybe it's Dusty Daddy. It's Dusty Baby. <laughs> Damien Priest was believable. He talked very, uh, a little New York y, which makes sense. He's a Puerto Rican gentleman from New York. So he would talk like he is from New York City. That makes perfect sense. I believed him. Uh, he basically cut the baby face promo, Damien Priest. They're planting the seeds, taking their sweet time. So it's not a matter of will Judgment Day break up. They will. Everything runs its course. But how? And will it just run on without him? Will it be Dominic's thing? Will it be? But Rhea's going to be loved when she comes back. I would imagine there's some kind of split with Dominic and then Rhea coming back. Uh, Chloe's doing something. I don't know what. Um, Chloe got a haircut. I don't know if she'll come by. She looks weird. Because they didn't, like, they, they, they cut her, her body, like, short, but not her tail or her head. So her head looks too big for her body. Chloe looks like she, like she did a bad Photoshop of herself. It's really bizarre. I imagine when Rhea comes back, um, there'll be uh, an immediate or a not a very quick separation from Dominic or something like that. So, sniffle, sniffle. Anyway, big uh, thumbs up to where we're going with Damian Priest. EO Sky wrestles Shayna Baszler in the second whatever Queen of the Ring. To, it starts off hot. Baszler attacks her. I guess there was some sort of backstage incident we didn't see on Hulu. Who's the heel here? There's two heels. EO's a heel with a heel group. And Baszler jumps her from the bell. Who's the heel? Well, they're both the heel. Who's the babyface? I didn't get it. Hell of a match, though. So the, the King and... This is why Triple H is, is so smart. There's a time for the bangers. The the intense, competitive, back-and-forth 50-50 matches with a little more length to them. In a tournament, it would make sense. If all the matches in it are really good or competitive, then, okay, the winner really won something. Instead of every single match is five minutes and a wacky finish where someone else interferes to carry on whatever the other, other issue is... 
And none of the victories really meant anything. Hello, Odie, is there, are you okay? He's moving the blanket. Okay, he doesn't care about the Hulu edition of Monday Night Raw. Come say hi. Come say hi. He, don't, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He threw up on Monday morning. He was in the grass. It doesn't really matter, but, but nevertheless, he threw up, and then he was kind of, he was kind of woozy, but he's doing better now. He's doing better now. I don't know what happened there with him. But I think he was limping a little t uh, yesterday and this morning, but now he's moving pretty good. Sometimes he hurts one of his back legs. Like, are you okay? He's not on camera. Like, why, why, why? Why is the issue? You my friend? You my friend? You my friend? Shayna Baszler and Io Sky did a lot of back and forth. And to my surprise, even without uh, a clear baby face, the crowd was getting into it. They were just getting into the action. The wrestling fans, the live wrestling crowd was happy they were getting competitive matches. Who knew? This doesn't mean they should all be bangers because then no one's going to get over it. It's, you know, someone else could learn that lesson. But I guess this tournament is the place to put them. Okay? Spend EO Sky advances. There you go. Uh, Kofi, I do not predict EO Sky winning. I'm a little, I don't know about the women. Maybe Jade Cargill or Tiffany Stratton would be my top picks so far. I don't think it'll be Bird Lady. We'll talk about her later. Kofi Kingston, Russell's Gunther, LOL. Another jump start, two in a row, but then again, this is Hulu, so maybe there were matches in between it. But uh, a little bizarre, a little nitpick of wrestling rules. They, they did like a long back and forth with Gunther selling his, his leg too, and then they rang the bell, and, and the, the announcers even made a point. The referee didn't even check on Gunther. You know, details, these details may not sound like a big deal. Oh, it's wrestling, but when Joe Channel Changer is changing channels, those are the things that, that Joe Channel Changer does. He goes, why would they do that? I don't get it. I don't get it. And then you, you click and you move on. So, worth noting, uh, Gunther beats the crap out of him. <laughs> and Gunther does a Boston Crab on a table, and the table makes the Boston Crab hurt more. And then Gunther continues the Boston Crab. Well, he let go at some point, but then he reapplies the Boston Crab in the ring and gets a submission victory. What do you say? What do you know? Tip the wheel, try the waitress. Adam Pierce is talking to a brunette lady. And the, um, the two British guys, um, Pete Dunn and uh, Tyler the Master Bait, uh, they say hi and they remind us they're going to be in a multi-tag team thing later tonight of some sort. Very good. They leave and Braun Breaker walks in as soon as they start talking about him, LOL, and Braun is very grumpy. He said, I should have been in the damn tournament. So there you go. How about that? We have a nice package in our face, dangling on our shoulder. Queen of the ring. It's all the matches and telling you why you should care and you should. Sorry for the sniffles. Lyra, Valkyrie, Valerie, whatever. Bird Lady. Bird Lady wrestles Tony Stark. And Tony Stark won the match against the, the Creed sister last week or something. And, uh, you know, I wasn't into that. They had the two uh, long 15-minute lunch breaks on the top turnbuckles during that match. I don't know what the situation was there. Anyway, Lila Valkyrie, everything, whatever her name is, everything she does in the ring, all her fundamentals are awesome. Her offense is awesome. She sells great. She sells her own offense great. I love everything she's doing bell to bell. And I didn't notice anything about her entrance. I have no problem with it. Um, and they let her talk. I don't want to get on new people's cases for, for talking awkwardly or having some not-so-great promos early on when they get called up because I'm sure that just as Triple H's NXT was radically different from Vince's Raw then Shawn Michaels' NXT is radically different from Triple H's Raw. I would, that would make sense to me. But... Oof. And it wasn't... It's not the accent. That's not it. She said, well, she said something in Gaelic first. And no one understood it, obviously. And then she said, if you don't know what I said, you're going to know. Or, no, we're not. We, we don't understand. I don't know. And then she said something in, in plain American English, and I don't know what that was either. Um, I think here's my issue with Bird Lady. Did I write down anything else about her? No. From the first time I saw her, probably uh, whenever the UK show was still going on, and then maybe a little bit in NXT when she was... I watched a few of those Becky Lynch matches she had like a year ago or something. Um, 
that's all well and good. But the thing was, like, the UK or NXT bird lady didn't, wasn't smiley, happy, happy to be there. They were, were falling back into happy to be there trap. Bird lady had an intensity. And, oh, she said something in this promo about, uh, who held the microphone for? Was it Cole or Pat? Maybe, maybe Michael Cole. Or was it Samantha Irvin? I don't know. But anyway, whoever held the microphone, she said something about when the crows fly, because, you know, she's a bird. But these people don't get all her bird references. Okay? And they're, they're sitting there crying foul, lol. I could do this all day. You can't just go up there and wing it. Okay, we can do this stuff for a while. And whatever. Uh... I don't know. I didn't... Is she supposed to be, like, mysterious, badass, ass-kicker lady? Or is she smiling happy to be there? She's, like, both at the same time. And I think we gotta pick a road. And right now, I think... Mysterious... <laughs> mysterious ass-kicker might be a better deal for her. Because she doesn't have to talk as much. And they're giving her the Becky rub. And I think that came uh, to be... Uh, they did that again. She saves Becky later. We'll get to that. Did she? I forget. Or am I, or am I confusing it with what they replayed the week before? I don't know. But anyway, she'll she'll be under <laughs> under Becky's wing. Get it, birds? Okay. Uh, whatever. Um, we stay on Hulu. We go right, right back to the women again. Who knows if there was another match in between? I don't. I know the Alpha Academy did some stuff on this show, but I don't know what. Because it was not on Hulu. Hulu edition. Dakota Kai wrestles Becky Lynch. And, um, very good match. Nothing nothing wrong with it. A little kerfluffle with some kind of stuttering. And then Dakota gives her, takes a kick from Becky and just takes like a back bump from the kick. Uh, very, and there was some kind of, but whatever. I mean, they talked, you could see them talking through it and they moved on. It wasn't really. You know, they go. They went through it. Not, not the end of the world. There's a DQ of some sort. I think Becky had Dakota beat and the rest of the damage control jumped in. I think this was good. Um, Dakota got beat last week by Lyra, Lyra Bird Lady. And for, if Dakota is going to be the leader of this group, she can't also be the, the, the job girl too. Um, Bird Lady got the big victory, but you can't have Dakota just getting beaten every single week. Kyrie Zane is a lot of fun to watch at ringside because I have no idea what she's doing. She's doing wacky hand motions and it makes no sense. And I know Asuka's injured right now, but whenever they're around, I, I never know what they're doing, but someone's just telling them just to go. Just and they're all twirling and spinning and doing wacky. I don't get it. Sometimes it's a little distracting, but then I, I like to look at goofy things. So, um, yeah, Liv Morgan ran in at some point and did something. I bet you Liv Morgan ran... I didn't write this down. Liv Morgan ran in. I bet you Bird Lady helped chase her off or something like that again. Who the hell knows? But Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch is the Saudi Arabia match in a week or so, a week and a half. I don't know, something like that. So there you go. That's why I'm saying that. Um, It's a four-way... It's a four-tag team thing to see who wrestles R-Truth and Miz. R-Truth and Miz are at ringside. In the previous mentioned... Four team thingy. The Ketchup Republic are there. Let's see if they can cut the mustard. The band Creed is there. Let's see if they can take us higher. Team Spooky is there as well as uh, well as Finn Balor and JD McDunfor. And Carlito's trying to get into the judgment day, and he gives someone in the match, probably a maybe a maybe a British guy or a Creed brother, he gives him his backstabber finish on a table, which makes no sense. You just hurt yourself. It's like doing the Stone Cold Stunner on a table. You just end up making things worse for you. I don't get it. But he did it, I guess, to make a sacrifice. and Because I guess he really wants a Judgment Day's protection from uh, Rey Mysterio, who he is terrified of. And that leads to some backstage things later with them. Finn Balor um, beats Pete Dunn. So Pete Dunn is done and McDunn 4 moves on. So McDonough 4 is done with done. And I'm done with this match. Uh, the Creed brothers are big, strong hosses. Team Spooky. Interesting how they're called the Authors of Pain. I don't see them doing a lot of um, reading, let alone writing anything of uh, literature nature. 
Carlito and Judge, yeah, Carlito and Judgment Day are backstage. Isn't that nice? Who cares? Uh, and he asks the thing. Carlito wants to be friends, and and Priest says it. That was cool. He says the thing, but he, I don't want anything to do with you. So Priest just kind of gives him not really a blessing, not a you're in or we're going to help you, but more of a, okay, thank you. We're not going to kill you, but it sounds like he really wants to move on. So it's almost like the story is Priest is trying very hard to not be the classic paper champion, money in the bank winner guy. Yeet enters. I didn't write anything down. Oh well. Right, Odie? Yeet wrestles Ilya Dragunov, as mentioned last week. Ilya's second week on TV is a baby face. He wrestles another baby face. I think he's a baby face. He acts like one. They're doing this thing. Before we get to the eating, we're doing this. Okay? And Kyrie Zayn is doing this. And Yeeting is doing this. He's eating. Yeet is eating. And then what else is happening? And Ilya's conducting. Okay? So maybe we're doing this. And maybe we're conducting like there. And maybe we're doing one of these. Whereas all last two years, we were going, oh, 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 or, oh, 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 or, whoa, oh, 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 or, oh, 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 That's four of the O's. Which one was I missing? I don't really care. Okay. Oh. So we went from the O's to wacky hand motions. So that's what we're doing. Ilya and Yeet have a match. Was it the, the, the banger that it was at Ricochet? No, it didn't matter. The Yeet guy is over... Isn't that nice? Yeah, um, I mean, this was a clash of styles. It was more about um, Ilya just winning in defeat, really. Um, a lot of people on the internet have cried that, how could they beat him? They're burying him when he... He lost to the guy who, who at the moment, by the way, has the most popular entrance, mainly because France went bananas and the, the last two weeks of American fans are gonna mimic it, which is gonna probably gonna happen for the rest of the year, probably. Uh, that's just the way it's gonna be. We we see something fun in Europe and we overdo it and yada yada yada. So that'll be fun. Um, now if this whatever if this rumored uh, Uncle Howdy Bray Wyatt tribute group ever shows up and they all do the cell phone light thing there and the Yeet thing is their cell phone light and they feud, everyone's batteries and their phone will die. So we'll see what happens there if that's the case. We'll give the Yeetster something to do. <laughs> the Yeetster, how about that? You like that, Odie? No, he doesn't care. He cares for nothing, Odie. Uh, what else happened in this match? Nothing to write home about. There's super kicks. There's, um, oh, uh, Yeetster got some blood on his ear. I don't know if his earring got pulled or he's got booted around or whatever. Uh, I am a little curious to see what changes, if any, Ilya makes to his his style. He doesn't seem to be stiffing a living crap out of everyone quite as much. Um, who knows? They have teased him and Gunther, but, you know, Gun after Yeet wins, Gunther walks past him. I know there was some backstage thing the week before that didn't make Hulu, where they just had a little staring contest for a second. Just to tell us, at some point, we will do it on some big stage. I don't know what, but just to tell us where we'll get it. But hopefully not on Raw with, like, commercial breaks and stuff. Hopefully it's some PLE or one of the PLEs, which is spelled please. Uh, blah, what else, any happen to match? No, Gunther and Neatster stared off or whatever they did, I forget what they did. So there'll be some match, I think, um, will it be in Saudi Arabia or no? I don't know, it's gonna be some of these things on SmackDown. Randy Orton is in, a, is Randy Orton, LA Knight, Carmelo Hayes and Tama Tonga are still in there, don't ask me. It's Tama Tonga versus LA Knight, Randy Orton versus Carmelo. I assume Orton beats Carmelo, which means he has to wrestle the heel, which would be Tama over LA Knight. So that leaves us with Orton and Tama, winner of that versus Easter and Gunther, I think. Is that correct? Eh, I don't know. Saudi Arabia. I think it's the Saturday, the 24th. Eh, something like that. 23rd, 24th. No, 25th. It would be after the thing. Okay, cool. So that's what happened. We are doing a, in my opinion, a a good job of not just waiting to get to Saudi Arabia, but it seems to be a much better job than in years past of making the Saudi Arabia thing feel like it matters and not just like, oh, Raw is on SmackDown or on hold for like six weeks as we build to the show that you're not gonna wanna see. 
it's just kind of because it's Saudi Arabia so many times has felt like this other universe like this fantasy like dream match house show thing and now it's starting to feel more like oh we need to see that uh, on Smackdown they're starting the Logan Paul Cody Rhodes thing isn't that nice who knows I don't have an opinion on that yet I'm reserving that my opinion for that when they do their second talkie segment coming up this week sign on a contract but speaking of signing things I'm signing out what do you say? Goodbye. I'm on my way to see Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes in theaters. I might tape this before the regular Wacky Neighbor part if I do one. So we'll see if I like the ape movie. A planet where ape evolved from man? Somehow, Odie. There's got to be an explanation. Thank you.